Welcome back to Tim and Sid with Faisal on Sportsnet Television and Radio. Brian Burke joins us now for some hockey talk brought to you by Boston Pizza. Join us every Saturday for Hockey Night in Canada at Boston Pizza. Berkey, it is always a pleasure. Damn, that was a fun night of hockey last night. Like I was envious of, of, of you, Elliot, and Jeff. Like that was to be there for all of it, to 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 soak it all in, that seemed like a fun night at the CBC building. It was. It, it was playoff hockey in January. It was amazing. I, I, I loved it. I loved both games. Uh, this job, you know, we get a lot of good games. So you get some bad ones. And yeah. uh, to get two great ones like that back-to-back was outstanding. But that was May hockey in January. And it was played with a proper level of truculence, too. Yeah, yeah so we get some truculence into the segment. You were pretty adamant off the front of the broadcast. Yeah, there was, there was going to be some fights here. Kachuk was going to answer the bell. Why Why were you so sure, and in the end you were proven right, why were you so sure heading in? Because there was enough people I heard, not with your resume, but there was enough hockey fans who were like, nah, it's going to be a dud tonight. Well, you got to listen to the right people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, correct. I, I will tell you, correct. so George Peros goes to the game, and when I did supplementary discipline for the NHL, we didn't call it player safety back then, I would go to these games when there was a hot spot, and it would often fizzle out because the guys would know I'm there. I'd tell both GMs, I'm watching. I'm going to start suspending people before I leave the building if I need to. And it would bring the temperature down. But I felt talking to Matthew Kachuk when he was here, and he didn't say, oh, I'm going to fight him. He just said, I'm getting sick of all the noise. I think people making fun of him and Zach talking a lot, and I think he just said I had enough. So he tried to start the fight early. Cassian said, he didn't say, no, I won't fight you. He said, we'll wait. And then they, uh, they you know, you could tell because Chuck wanted all of that. So I, I, everyone did what they're supposed to do. These, all these incidents, everyone has done what they're supposed to do. Chucky's running people. Zach's had enough. McDavid comes in and runs Kachuk from behind when he hits him on the third time. Cassian's had enough. He gives it to him. You know, you could argue you had it coming then. Everyone did the right thing. So last night, everyone did the right thing again. That, the one I didn't expect was Nuge and Monty. What would you make of that uh, tussle? Well, like I said last night, lots of enthusiasm and not great technique. <laughs> they tried hard, though. I mean, oh. that wasn't bad for two guys that don't really do it, no, right? No, it was great. Yeah. They, and they, they both they both grew two inches in the eyes of their teammates. That the Teammates respect this. When you're willing to fight in an important game and you're not good at it, you still do it. <laughs> People respect that. Teammates respect that. They both did great. See, Berkey, but here, here's what I'm thinking during this. If you're the coach behind the bench – or the GM upstairs watching guys like this go, that always makes me a little nervous. But the buckets came off early. So that's important. The helmets came off. Good point. Good point. That, when you break your head on a guy in a fight, it's 90, 99%, 99 times out of 100, it's a helmet. All right. There was a bunch of uh, other stuff a little later as well. The Giordano and McDavid, uh, David Riddick celebrating the way. Did you think any of this, again, boils over into Saturday? The great part of this, again, we get him again in 48 hours. you think there's more tension, more escalation that goes down there in Calgary? Well, you know, having worked in Calgary, and I do a radio show now in Calgary and Edmonton, and there's a genuine hatred between the two markets. It's not contrived. It's not some mythical thing that people create for the media. It's two days on the job in Calgary, and I hated the Oilers. And now I do a radio show in both markets, and I'm starting to like the Oilers. And people in Calgary think I'm a traitor. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, to me, it's, I, I don't think it's over because these teams don't like each other. Yeah. What saved last night from being much more difficult was the score. It was dependent, uh, uh, dependent on the score how much shenanigans there were. And it was a one-goal game the entire game and then a tie. And as a player, you're not going to risk putting your team down trying to settle a score in a one-goal game where the points are so vital right now and the teams are so close in the standings. And, in fact, you'd talk about that on the bench. You'd say, hey, guys, everyone, everyone park that stuff. We need the two points. So, But if it had been 4-1, to one, I have no doubt in my mind there would have been a half dozen fights. Were you okay with Giordano on McDavid? No, that should have been a two-minute penalty. I love Mark Giordano. Everyone knows yeah. that. I had him. I really respect him. I loved having him as a player. It should have been a penalty. It's not more than that. Like, they're... they're as I joked in Edmonton on the radio today, they're calling for his imprisonment up there. <laughs> now, it, it's a two-minute penalty. It's not a dirty play. He's trying to get beat Connor McDavid to the puck, which is usually a bad bet. His left leg isn't out a little bit here, yeah. Berkey? It, no, that's no, not no. dirty enough for you? No, I, it's okay. a reaction hit to me. He's okay. not coming in to get him dirty. Connor chips the puck by him. He's going full speed. Mark sticks out his leg, clips him. Should have been a two-minute penalty. Nothing more than that. But I have nothing, no uh, objection to 
Connor getting that mad. That's a surgically repaired, not surgically repaired, his rehab leg. And the thing I like about Connor McDavid the most besides watching him is that he never complains. For him to complain that much, he was sour. That's a visual you don't often yeah. see from that young he doesn't, man. You know, he, he gets fouled. He gets hooked. He gets... He never complains. He never complains about officiating. He never complained when his team was terrible and they missed the playoffs by a mile. He never complained. He's never complained as a pro. I love that. The really great ones don't complain. Last night, he had enough. He was sour. I love David Riddick and that celebration. I didn't know he had sauce like that. You know, I didn't know that was a swagger that he had. Throwing the stick up like that. You like that? That was fun? Well, if you know David Riddick, uh, yeah. I mean, he was there when we signed him. He's a very exuberant guy. He did a snow angel after the second post. When McDavid hit the post, he did a snow angel. Throws the stick, does it. But that's he's that exuberant. He's that kind of kid. He's you know he's a, he's the kind of kid. If he comes down at Christmas and finds a, a pile of pony turds under the tree, he runs upstairs and gets a rope. And parents say, "What are you doing?" He said, "He couldn't have got far. <laughs> I'm gonna catch the pony." <laughs> like he's an eternal optimist. So he's always in a good mood, which is a great asset for a team. So that's David Riddick. Now. If I'm on Edmonton, am I going to bump him Saturday night if I get a chance after that? Yep. Probably. Yep. This is all good. Everyone's yep. doing the right thing. I'm with you. I think this is entertaining stuff. No one's leaving on stretchers. It's, it's, it's good. Uh, before we leave the Pacific completely, the Canucks last night, down going into the third, get the victory, and it was a tough night for Santa. Thomas Hurdle is now gone for the season, so there was a lot of significance out of that game last night. From what, A, from what you're seeing from Vancouver, does that look like a first-place club to you, and B, what does Thomas Hurdle and that injury do to maybe even the trade deadline coming up? Sharks look like they are more than out of it right now. Well, he's such a good player, and, and Logan Couture is still hurt. Um, I don't see how they come out of that missing two significant parts like that. I really don't. Uh, I, Thomas Hurdle is a, a really underrated player. The guys that play on the West Coast that are really good players don't get talked about in Toronto enough. Right. And he's a really good player, and he's supposed to be a really good kid too. This is really a shame, but I don't see it as something that they can come back from because they're already having such trouble. They're stuck in the sand so badly already to lose a player of that caliber on top of Logan Couture, who I love. Uh, I can't see them getting back into this thing. Now, who knows, right? You never know. And in terms of Vancouver, you buying what they're selling? Yeah, as long as the goaltending, as long as the goaltender stays healthy, this guy's been, I mean, you got to start talking Vesna here at some Mm -hmm. point for this guy. He's been unreal. He's been lights out and, uh, They've got two lines scoring now. The you know Jim Benning went out and got J.T. Miller, and everyone said it was too much first round pick and whatever else he gave. And and uh, I remember saying at the time on TV, it's easy to be right in the media after it happens, right? But I said at the time, I really like this player, and I think it's given them a a legitimate first line, second line. They've got some balance now. They can play him with the big boys or move him down. He wins faceoffs. He kills penalties. He scores goals. He can fight. Um, I think it's given them a different look. I think it's given them some swagger and bite up front. I like their captain, Bo Horvat. I think that was the right choice for the captain. I love their young guys, Besser and Pedersen. Yeah. And their defense is underrated, but they've gotten star quality goaltending from the start of the year. If that continues, yeah, they're legit. All right, let's move uh, to the East. The Leafs, another entertaining game. Yeah, they Dallas were good last held night. Held on. Uh, has anything in the last two games post All Star break helped ease the nerves of Leaf Nation? that was maybe going in into the break, into the bye week after one win in six games. Has anything changed over the last couple of games to make you think, oh, yeah, maybe they figured it out a little bit? Well, this, this is Toronto. Yeah. Of course it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw people out in front of uh, Scotiabank Arena today measuring the railroad bridge height to see if the floats could get under it. So they win two games, and now they're picking out the parade route. Just um, don't pick the Raptors parade route. That took a while. Yeah, that, so, that, Seriously, so that's – but they're – there was co- cause for concern, not because they were losing, but they were getting manhandled, and their defensive system seemed to have broken down completely against Chicago. They gave up so many quality chances at Winnipeg. So I think there was legitimate cause for concern. They were sharp in these two games. They were really sharp. Um, I, I thought I didn't think Nashville was inspired at all, but I thought they got a good game back from Dallas last night, and they had a real early storm they had to withstand. They were good. Uh, Nylander was really good last night. Um, Freddie was good when he had to be. But I think if I'm a season ticket holder, which I am, I'm a season ticket holder at least, I, I do uh, support the team, the the guy I'd be most excited about would be Sandine in these first two guys. Marner, so fun. Marner's two assists last night are Incredible. both highlight reels. Yeah. Spectacular. Like these, these are plays, there's only maybe a dozen players in the league can make that play. Mitch Marner had two 
seeing eye dog assist last night, like magical assists. Um, but the guy I'd be most excited about maybe is is watching Rasmus Sandin. Yeah. He was he's really good, really good, physical, made good passes, really impressive. Um, Sandin's looking good, uh, and they're playing him smart minutes. You know, they're not demanding too much yet. So, and he's looking good. Willie Nealander now five goals in five games. Uh, but Austin Matthews, 17 goals in his last 17 games. Uh, one back of Pasternak. And, and people talked about his contract at the time, uh, especially outside of Toronto with some disdain with how, how it came about, not enough term, yada, yada, yada. In your opinion, Berkey, if Matthews wins the Rocket Richard Trophy this year, does it change people's perspective on the contract given by Kyle Dubas? Well, what does Pasternak make? I'm confused. I'll look it up. I think it, it starts it, it with an eight. Math, it ain't what Matthews is. No, no, no it not starts with an eight. So who's, who's third in the goal scorer? Ovechkin. Third is Ovechkin, correct. Yeah, he's, his starts with an eight. Pasternak's at 6.67. Yeah, yeah, I remember deal. that contract so, being that part. It's a hell of a good deal. Do you want to rephrase the question? Yeah, let's maybe? talk about <laughs> Nylander a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's not going to change the fact that this contract was way higher than it needed to be. What it does is it stops people talking about it because he's putting up the numbers. I think he's a great young player. And I, I, I said this on TV last night. He's just scratching the surface. He's a goal a game for 17 games. He's better than that because he hasn't figured out how to throw people around yet, how to throw people off. He's so big and so strong. He's scoring now with a great release, a great shot. He's got one of the best shots in the league, if not the best. But he's going to figure out. He did it the other night. Someone kind of glommed onto him and he just threw him off. And you, mean, he, you mean physically, physically throw him off? Throw not just up. with a deke. You mean no, physically get rid of him? I mean physically manhandle people. Um, and throw people out of the way and shrug through checks and fight through checks. He's just figuring that part out, and as great as he is already, he's going to be better. Yeah, we got, uh, we got about a minute 40 seconds left with the one and only Brian Burke after a phenomenal night of hockey last night. Um, trade deadline's fast approaching Monday, February 24th. The Leafs, as is per usual this time of year, are rumored to be looking at defensemen. That is what everyone's talking about because that makes sense. But with this roster, the way it's, it's, it's formulated – some names are going to have to go here. So if you're going to bring in some money, there's got to be some money going out. Who on the roster right now, Berkey, you look at and say, there's no way if Kyle Dubas brings in a defenseman, this player is still here. Well, the only – I mean, Janssen, uh, Kaplan, these are likely suspects. Uh, but the only way – the names they're talking about are like Matt Dumba. Well, I, I can't imagine Minnesota wants to move Matt Dumba. I love him. He's a right-shot defenseman. He's skate. He's a great kid. He plays hard. Let's see. If you trade him, hmm. Who steps up on that one? But assuming they are, you're not going to get a player of that caliber for players like Andreas Janssen and Kapanen. You're just you're not. It's that simple. And volume won't help. You can't. You know, it's like you say to a guy you want to buy a giraffe. He says no. I so I'll give you two for one. Well, the guy didn't want two giraffes either. <laughs> so two for one doesn't help. Um, Best giraffe analogy I've ever heard. So you know, to me, it's going to be tough. They're capped out. But I will say this: Kyle's a smart guy, and I have faith that if there's any way to do this, he will figure it out. I just can't see it. With the cap situation and the pieces they have, I can't see it. And I hope I'm on this show admitting I was wrong in a month. Okay. We shall see. Ryan Burke, who will be part of our February 24th trade deadline coverage, I think, right? I'm assuming you're sure, there? Yeah. All right. I haven't seen the schedule, but I'm assuming <laughs> well, I'm, Burke is I'm there. I'm on trade deadline, yes. I, I love the trade I deadline. I need more giraffe analogies on my trade deadline. Thanks, Berkey. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. 